Well, this is just great. Oh well, soapbox it is. Now, where was I? Ah yes, we're three episodes in now, so let's see how this goes. Before we do, please subscribe to help build my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. Picking up where we left off, Daphne and Velma are still twisting more tongues than Mary Anning, and Velma doesn't quite know what to do with herself. At school, well, someone's living their best life, Velma meets up with Norville and tells him she has her mother's case file, and Norville won't stop talking about how Velma being gay is the biggest thing ever. Norville mentions his dad is going to hold a press conference for the school to help the kids process the murders, then for some reason Velma coughs up the flower that she ate earlier. Oh, that's right, that was the audience's cue to laugh. <laughs> At the conference, it's going awful for Norville's dad, and his mom interjects about women taking a self-defense class, which isn't unreasonable. Velma butts in with a comment about why don't the boys take a stop killing women class, and the mom says the $50 budget isn't enough to... Because I only have $50 in the budget to combat centuries of toxic masculinity. Don't worry, comrade. Propaganda is good for you. Or else. And it turns out Daphne's moms are the instructors, and Velma grabs Norville and just leaves the school to go and talk to Freddy about Dia's disappearance. In the prison, Velma and Norville go to visit Freddy when she has another hallucination that happens at yet again another inconvenient time. Norville makes her laugh, she gets tackled and banned from the prison. On the way back, Norville tells Velma to figure herself out while he interviews Freddy. Back at school, Velma sneaks into the self-defense training class, and these absolute limp noodles give the worst possible advice. Don't fight. Just make like a grown man who lightly stubbed his toe. Yell, fall down, and go limp. What the fuck is this? This is as useless as Finland's stop rape videos. Of course, the two picked to demonstrate are Daphne and Velma, both of whom run off to the bathroom together to discuss their confusion. Nothing gets resolved and tempers flare enough that back at the gymnasium, Daphne straight up roundhouses Velma in the face. After recovering, Velma and Daphne bicker and we learn tomorrow, you know, the day after the self-defense training classes are introduced, there will be a competition among the girls. Wow, never mind the pace Rings of Power set up because it has officially been passed. Any faster and Velma will travel back to a better time, if only we were so lucky. So after that announcement is made, Velma makes an oddly agreeable point. How will fighting girls help us defend ourselves against attacks from guys? Is first prize a gun? I think I see now why this show is so equally hated by woke tards, because to be fair it does try to make fun of both sides occasionally. More on this later. Over in prison, Norville interviews Freddy, trying to guide the subject towards Dia's disappearance, but Freddy resists obviously knowing something about it. Then Freddy's cellmate walks over, tells Norville like it is about his chances with Velma, and Norville pushes him, and that starts a fight. The next day, in gym, the girls' competition begins, and while Velma figures out that going limp against women is enough to beat them, Daphne is racking up more bodies than Harold Shipman. Meanwhile, Norville explains to his dad what happened, and his dad gives Norville his cardigan. In the girls' bathroom, Velma goes to talk with Daphne, who says she isn't sure about her feelings since she has more to lose. Some girls come in, Daphne shows she trains at Cobra Kai, and leaves with her journal, giving Velma an idea. Back at prison, Norville puts on the cardigan and gets Freddy talking, and while a few things are brought up about how Freddy was treated growing up, nothing about Dia's disappearance comes up besides the fact that she was at the Jones Mansion. Then we see multiple prisoners want to sit down and have a talk with Norville. Back at the school, the final match occurs between between Velma and Daphne, but Velma is looking to destroy Daphne by reading Daphne's journal to the school. How did she get it? No clue. Remember, don't think, kids. Just consume. So Velma reads out that Daphne talks to Norville's dad about problems. Yeah, that, that's it, there's nothing there. So Velma's plan fails, and Daphne sends Velma flying like she watched the Honeymooners. In the counselor's office, Velma opens up about her feelings for Daphne and works out that she might need to just accept it, I guess? I'm not sure what the point of this scene here is, other than maybe it has something to do in the long run, I'm not sure. So Norville picks up Velma and relays that Freddy didn't have anything to do with Dia's disappearance, and is probably innocent, but since he's white, we're gonna leave him in jail even though he's totally innocent. Yeah, but isn't it a little comforting to see a rich white guy get wrongly convicted for once? I'm too distracted to enjoy it. So Norville drops Velma off at Daphne's, and he remembers that he had a group therapy session at the prison. Since Norville didn't arrive in time at the prison, 
they decide to riot. They break out of prison and make a break for it. Meanwhile, Velma and Daphne have a talk, and Daphne explains she feels abandonment issues, having been adopted and worried that Velma was going to leave Daphne again. Velma, however, is still the self-centered moron we know her to be. And yet, the two settle their differences and become friends again. Now back at the prison, which is on fire like 1871 Chicago, Norville and his dad discuss about how he's not ready to wield the power of the cardigan. When Norville hands it over, a business card for the Crystal Cove Insane Asylum falls out of the pocket, and Lamont is about to tell Norville something about his mom before the episode finishes on Velma looking for pictures of Daphne for... reasons. Oh, and during the breakout, Freddy is tased, I guess. Look, I know this is only the third episode. I, I, I know I'm also quite behind, but are we supposed to be focused on the person murdering students for their brains? This show has more padding than Lisa Ann's implants. I hate when these shows do this. They ignore the story itself for messaging and propaganda, trying to score as many brownie points as they can. Why do I have to give a shit about Velma's mother or who Daphne's parents are? In fact, why not make Dia's disappearance the main focus of the story and build on that with different different subplots all tying back into or around the main plot. That way, everyone could get an episode dedicated to setting up each other or, or giving them a reason to join the group and a challenge to overcome and ultimately a goal to achieve. Instead, what we get here is vapid characters with no interest or care about the main mystery who are caught up in their own bullshit drama and it's as insufferable as Hassan Piker. Can I suck your cock? Also, as mentioned earlier, Velma does attempt to make fun of both sides. Sure, that scale may be tipped most times like Whoopi Goldberg is sitting on it, but it does occasionally lift the other way, and when it does rebalance, I don't think these people can handle it. Just like on my birthday! Only this time, Bill Gates didn't even jump out of a cake for me! Yes, but you hurt her feelings, which is way worse these days. It is absolutely one way and no other way, and making fun of Man Boobs Gates here is probably also off-limits since he's helping to spread the ideas they regurgitate. Not to mention the statement of the best way to give women a fighting chance against men is to give them a firearm. How will fighting girls help us defend ourselves against attacks from guys? Is first prize a gun? You know, because of that little thing called biology. Either way, I think this is part of the reason for this show's failure, since it hasn't adhered to the strict doctrine it professes to follow. And as I am being fair here, good on the show for making some of the points to balance itself out. I know this is heresy in the eyes of the new religion infecting Western culture, but at least there is some self-awareness. Certainly more than I saw before. Lastly, and I haven't mentioned it before because I didn't really care, but man, is this animation and art style awful? Sure, it's a cartoon, and cartoons can look as all goofy and shit as they want, but animation here skips frames like Ethan Klein does the gym. I know this has been a problem in the animation world for many years now, with shows trying to cut corners to save on costs, but at least try to do something more than people just staring at the horizon like Doom Guy, or add in what's necessary to smooth out certain scenes. Whatever, onward and upward, I suppose. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.